Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm playing with old stuff again. This time the most useful measuring device I ever had. I normally use it to repair all kinds of analog circuits like power supplies and stuff like that. And I'm using it since many many years as you can see. We also have a slightly newer device, the Tracker 2000. Now guess from what year it is. Um, yes, and here is how it works. On the x-axis you see voltage and on the y-axis you see current. So if I short the pins we have a lot of current, no voltage. And if the pins are not connected we have a lot of voltage, no current. And the resistor looks like that. It has a little bit voltage and a little bit current, straight diagonal line. Then we test a diode, that's a normal diode, 4007 or something like that. And the diode shows us the typical diode uh, pattern. You may notice it's from right to left, normally we have it from left to right. You can buy them from anywhere. Just look for VI curve tester, comes from voltage and current. Uh, they come in different shapes and uh, with different amount of features. There is even one with a built-in CRT and I really like that. It's a little bit expensive but CRTs are certainly the best way to go. But the best part of this tester is you can build it yourself. And it's very easy. All you need is a transformer, three resistors and two probes and two lines that go to your X and Y channel oscilloscope. Yes, you need an oscilloscope. It doesn't work without and it, you need uh, one that has a proper XY mode. It also works with a digital uh, oscilloscope but an analog one with the CRT is much better because it reacts faster and well digital oscilloscope always have a delay and that's sometimes a little bit annoying. So how does it work? It's very simple. You see the two probes on the bottom red and black. Black is connected to ground as well as that 1000 ohm resistor. Um, and we have two lines going to the vertical and the horizontal part of the oscilloscope. If the two probes are not connected, everything is open, uh, the vertical voltage will be dropped to ground through that 1k resistor because the oscilloscope has a 1 megohm of impedance, so a 1 kiloohm resistor is quite a load, so it vertical drops. And we have therefore full voltage on the horizontal uh, output here. So you get this horizontal line when nothing is connected. Now let's say you short red and black probes so the red probes goes to ground through the black probe, so horizontal uh, voltage is zero. And all the voltage you have goes to the vertical. And uh, even if there is a 1k resistor, there is no other path for the voltage to go. So vertical will get full voltage and you have a vertical line. And everything in between will create all these patterns you probably know. This is a defective power supply. I first try to measure the input. There is absolutely nothing telling me that the fuse is blown. Then the full bridge rectifier and we see all the diodes are short. They are just a piece of wire. There are no more diodes, so they are certainly broken. 
then we have two large transistors and yes they are mounted in that way by the manufacturer they have a diode in parallel and if we measure that we can see this zigzag curve and that tells us the diode and the transistor is fine So the first repair step is to replace all these components I just measured, the fuse, diodes, and then we will see what else is necessary. And of course I'm also replacing all the electrolytic capacitors. These boards are old, they are almost 20 years old or even more. And well, when I repair them, I change the caps anyway. And I'm checking a few more components here. There are two uh, power resistors, very low uh, ohm resistors. They show like something like a short circuit, that's okay. And these two resistors don't look very good, so I will replace them too. That big diode here seems to be okay. Another interesting measurement is MOSFET transistors. You can see I'm touching the gate with my thumb and in the same time I'm tapping to the ground with my foot. That creates a little bit of electrostatic voltage and that's enough to drive that MOSFET transistor and you can see it gets conductive. And because this foot tapping method is not very professional, I made a little adapter here where you can put your MOSFET transistor in and then you connect gate to ground or the measurement, uh, the red line here. And you can see it does the same. It's now time to replace components here, new diodes. And the new fuse, of course. Now these burnt resistors are used 
to uh, create the minimum load for the power supply. They are 1k resistors, two in parallel. I don't have 1k resistors that big, but I have 2k resistors, 2.2k, and uh, two of them in parallel makes 1k. So I need four of them to get the original 500 ohms. <laughs> Let's test it again. On the input you see a short spike, that's the input capacitor that charges up. You have to wait until you see it again. Um, then we apply power if everything is okay and we see what happens. Without the heatsink I can run it only for a couple of seconds, but that's okay. It runs and now it's time to mount it back on the heatsink. The heatsink, by the way, is made of steel. I don't know why the manufacturer has chosen that, because aluminium would be much better to uh, dissipate heat. And he also sometimes uh, riveted these clamps to that steel plate which is very annoying to repair. I'm using a large 10 ohm resistor here as a load. Uh, the power supply has an output of 24 volts that makes 2.4 amps and a big green LED to see if everything is okay. Speaking of strange decisions here are two power supplies from the same manufacturer. This time they have an aluminium heatsink, but they mounted the transistor upside down with the front face to the heatsink. So I assume not much cooling is needed for this one, but well, it's strange anyway. <laughs> 